This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. December 21st, 2007, and in the House of Strange Love. Can anyone do a good drum roll? I, I could if I had a drum that, right you here. You don't have your drums, yeah, babe. I could too, but I'm not going to. Okay. I don't think... Oh, there you go. Um, The winner. Silver. The winner. The winner of the naughty contest was a little song by the name of Santa's Punish Me Polka. Well, it wasn't really Santa's Punish Me Polka. No, it was just called Punish Me Polka. But we renamed it to put it in the Christmas mood. Correct. And it was written by Deb on the Rocks. Yes. And it was the uh, overwhelming winner. Overwhelming. Killed everybody. It did. It it just. uh, I'm going to say one person didn't vote for it to be the winner. It was the Iron Chef of Entrance. Yeah, it was. I have written here on my tally sheet. Welcome to another edition of Strange Love, a special Christmas in June kind of edition. Um, I'm, as always, your host, Gemi Chaos, and I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And our very, very special guest this week, winner of our holiday Chaos Holiday Song Contest, uh, Deb on the Rocks. Hi, Deb. Hi, Cammie. Hi, Doc. Hey. How you doing tonight? 
I'm so happy to be here with you, even though I'm not on the real couch. We're sad. We have a little space saved for you over here. You can't see it, but, you know, we've kind of got air propped up by two pillows. Excellent. Someday. Someday. Some, someday. Until then, I'm glad If you're to be ever in you Oregon, you just let us know. Come on the show again. Okay. We'll make you some cocktails. You can sit on the couch. You can tell us about boat paddles. You might want to reassess after the evening's done, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you back out if you need to. That's fair. I doubt that we'll need to, but why don't you start making me eat my words by telling us about boat paddles? I've been told by a U streamer, U streamer twenty one twenty six to be exact, that I need to ask about boat paddles. Oh, is it starting already? It's starting. Good we can go back to Christmas two thousand and seven. All right. How about we do Christmas two thousand seven and then boat paddles? Why are we playing Christmas in two thousand and seven? <laughs> Clearly, we're playing Christmas 2007 music because Deb on the Rocks wrote the winning entrance. And that's when I met you, too. Mm-hmm. That's when I became I, familiar with Deb on the Rocks. I won in the naughty category because I, I would never win in the nice category. No. No, no, no. Not with the lyrics that you submitted. And hands down, <laughs> excellent lyrics they were. The judges were. We were. Pants down. Pants down, hands down, yes. shirts up. <laughs> Bottom smacked. <laughs> unanimous. Well, not unanimous. I can't remember who didn't vote for it. One person didn't vote for it to be the winner, but I think it was still in their top three. But they and I have obviously to, were stupid. I have to tell you, I don't blush often, but when I, when I listen to the show and I've just loved hearing your voice, Aww. that... I learned that your father was part of the listening committee and yeah. you guys had all these thoughts about s and and the song and practices <laughs> and I thought, Thank you for wow. noticing. <laughs> we put some serious thought and effort into that. It's but- just one big <laughs> sex show s and party over here at the Chaos Family. You know, it's it's the so in-laws, West it's everybody. Yeah, it's so West Coast, really, it is. So West Coast. I don't think my mother voted on the naughty category. I think she's blushing too much. She voted on the other category. I think she just sat and blushed and, uh, and, and had nothing to say on the, the naughty category. But my dad not only was one of the uh, judges, he also was one of the voices on the song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he also helped sing the song. Yeah, he sat there while I recorded the entire thing. <laughs> he, he was one of the elves. What elf? The more outspoken one, the one that went, oh, she's naughty. That was, yeah. That was my dad in elf form. He, Fantastic. We, we gave him a lot of gin before he did that. Yeah, late, late at night on a Christmas, uh, you know, holiday, uh, singing your naughty lyrics to the song uh, in the uh, basement lounge, you know. It was, a, it was a happening. It was fun. And great So ever lyrics. since then, I've, been, I've wanted to be a part of your family. And, <laughs> and that's why I was hoping that um, Cammie would take me as one of your sister wives. Aww. I will have to discuss that with Beth and like Holly. Is this like a Texas thing? No, Beth and Holly. Duh. Yeah. I'm... Oh, so it is a Texas thing. No, 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 because they're mine, not yours. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> if it was a oh, Texas... Oh, that's different. Yeah. Fail. Yes, exactly. Fail. I'll talk to Beth and Holly. Holly is probably sleeping because she's in Cardiff. Beth is on the show somewhere. Not only are you a polygamous, but you seem to have several polygamous families. Yeah. Yeah. That's some complicated algebra. I don't know. Yeah. it's. uh, I'd have to break out the old textbooks from high school in order to figure some of this stuff (laughs) out. So... But yes, we had a, we had an excellent time recording that song. It was it was a great time. I think you wandered over from Mr. Fab's place, and I'm so glad that you did. Me too. Me too. Now tell us about boat paddles. Are we done with Christmas? No, Can I, I find think out she about needs to boat tell paddles? us where where she's calling in from the witness protection program. Okay. Does she want to talk about that? Do you want to tell us about the witness? <laughs> Oh, sure. Well, I when we when we booked the show when we set this date, I thought I was home from traveling, but I'm still traveling, and I live in Tallahassee, but I'm in Clearwater, Florida, so I'm in a hotel with one of my children, and I didn't want to do the call from the room, so I had to ask the hotel, I wrangled six staff into helping me find the best place for this, and they, <laughs> they just set me up in Rusty's Restaurant, which is uh, closed right now for business, except for me, 
and I'm in a booth, and it's very mafioso. It's very, very private, dark, cavernous, just me, a big restaurant, and you. You know, and I am not upset that you're not on our couch. I'm upset that we're not in the mafioso booth with you. It, it, it is a pretty auspicious place to have a conversation. I have to say, things could happen here. That is so fantastic. You let us know if, like, you know. Is there, like, Agent Fred next to you Anyone comes into the restaurant late at night. Uh, Agent Fred, can I get a glass of water, please? <laughs> right. And they're still wearing a waiter costume, but they've got to speak into their earpiece. And <laughs> it's, it's happening for my secret government job. I, I think this is maybe the best best place that we've ever had someone record the show before. I'm trying to think. Have, have we had anything similar? No, this wonderful? is great. Um, we often don't talk to people in the witness protection program, and we're glad you're traveling and making sure you're in compliance with the federal government. <laughs> and what's great for me is, is I do have a... Well, I guess we have a little disturbance for a minute. I do have a... Are they going to cap somebody? <laughs> you, you never know. So if it goes blank, you know... Is it Vinny my, and Louie? Look for my... Look for my Twitter later. Okay. I'm going to use my one call for a Twitter to save my life. <laughs> if Twitter's working, you know that's what's going to happen that's, to me. The yeah. one, one You'll time need I need to Twitter. save you. Yeah, it works for a student in Egypt who just uh, got sent to jail. But for you in the witness protection program. Fail whale. Cap- exactly. <laughs> yeah, stinking whale. Twitter is over capacity. There are many witnesses who are now about to be murdered. <laughs> Yeah, all seven of us. But what's great for me, so I have my, my cocktail, but I also, should I get hungry, there's some not Berry Farm preserves on the table. Oh, and you so could I can just, oh, just down them. Yeah, there's, yeah, I could just, you know, pretend they're a jello shot and get some sugar for a quick escape. Yeah, you might need that. Oh, orange marmalade. Do they have Sometimes strawberry? Very bitter. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the strawberry knots preserves. I'll look for one. You know, those are hard to come by. They are really hard to come by because every restaurant that I go to that has them, I eat every one I can find. I just down them all. I travel okay. the country looking for strawberries, strawberry jelly. And you, and you leave the mixed berry and the orange marmalade. For they're everybody. crap, you know? They're just, I, they're not what I want. you got to be for yourself. Yeah, I'm a selfish, selfish little pig. Can't, you got to be. You know, what am I going to do? Except for now, can I ask about boat paddles yet? Well, that's a different holiday. Ooh, it's that, a holiday. Um, that's a different holiday anniversary practice, and it, it's a paddle, too. It's a paddle. See, in Florida, a, a lot of the wonderful things we can do include going to beach houses and pretending you live there and taking over all their things and repurposing them. Uh-huh. So um, that must have been a comment from my sugar, who has a bit of a memory about a repurposed, boat decorative boat or that was put to a new use oh was it a standard love paddle use or was it you know well it would be standard if it weren't for the size of this boat or (laughs) (laughs) very large boat or that decorated you know the size of a king size bed headboard so my goodness that's a sturdy paddle yes and one one can get some things accomplished with that paddle if, if you were you to employ it correctly. Yeah, I don't know that I would have the uh, wherewithal to employ a paddle that large properly. You know, it's not for beginners. No. It's not. No, I don't even know if it would be for the, uh, you know, moderate <laughs> le- learning curve there. I mean, that's 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 a big paddle. <laughs> so, before we go any further, would you like to tell us where your blog is and what you write about there? Sure. Um, my blog's at www.debontherocks.com. And you have to put in the www because I don't know what I'm doing with it at all. And and some for some reason, other people don't seem to need the www, but I do. And I don't know why. You need the www but, um, for Cam and Chaos, too. So It's not just you. You're not alone in your need of www. <sighs> See, see, and that's why we blog, because you get this connection. Yes. And you know you're not alone. No. And what do I write about there? Gee, whatever obsesses my mind at the moment. Um, I'm an obsessive kind of person, and so whatever's crossing my mind and the people around me don't want to hear about anymore, or I know better than to try to 
try to work it out in front of them. I just put it there, and it usually tends to be either pop culture or random meanderings of my mind or rants or who My knows favorite what. is when you mix the pop culture with your random meanderings. <laughs> That's probably what usually happens because, you know, it's all a martini shaker in there. Mm-hmm. I like martini shakers, too. You throw a martini shaker in with your random babblings and your pop culture, and, and I'll be entertained for hours. Oh, is this drink <laughs> time? What are we drinking? Oh, I'm waiting for the music. I'm drinking a not dirty because I'm out of olive juice. Dry martini. Yay. And Deb on the War Rocks is drinking... drinking? Campari and soda. Ooh. Mm. Ari and soda. And Dr. Normal, what are you drinking this evening? Uh, I just finished a little Trader Joe's Pinot Noir. <laughs> the budget got cut here on the show. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to break into a little Trader Joe's Bordeaux. Because <laughs> the budget got cut on the show. Yeah, we, we no longer have the budget for olive liquid or expensive wine, apparently. That's right. Send your cards and letters and your donation to Strange Love Live. Now, we need a drink budget. So, where does the on the rocks part come from? Is it from drinking things on the rocks, or is it, you know, you hit a rocky patch in your life, or is it, where did that particular name come from? Yeah, I think both of those things, I don't know. You know, I named it very impulsively. I started... I've read blogs for a while that I started it very impulsively, and I don't know if I'm in love with the name or not, but I didn't, I don't know, what do you, it's hard to name yourself, you know, I don't know how you chose to name yourself, but it's hard to, I didn't name myself. (laughs) You did it. No. Cam, well, Cammy is uh, the shortened version of my, my given name, and the Cammy Chaos came from a friend who had a friend in high school who was a really perky cheerleader. And her name was Cami something that was looked vaguely like K A O S. It was a different spelling, so they always called her Cami Chaos. But she was very much not. It didn't fit her. They were teasing her, and so when she met me and it fit me, she she kind of handed me that nickname, and it was the first nickname that anyone had ever used that I really liked, and it just kind of stuck. That's perfect. I, I thought about I don't know contracting with someone who's good with names like. Frank Zappa or Demi Moore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Frank the Tula, Zappa. Yeah, Moon Unit on the Rocks. Or, mm-hmm. I don't know. Dweezil on the me. Rocks. The right. Central Scrutinizer. <laughs> exactly. So I, it was impulsive, and I think I think I liked it that it had a, a few different meanings. That, and the URL is free, so that's always half of the naming game. Do like, you, you don't... You changed your header because originally when, uh, last year when we did the song contest, your header had a, like, classic, like, I don't know, 17th, 18th century drawing of a woman rowing a boat on the (laughs) shore, on the rocks. It was pretty cool. No, I loved that Mm -hmm. header. I loved it. Yeah, I have a few that I've cycled through and then come up with. Now you have the ice cubes. I like that one. (laughs) Seems appropriate for summer. It is really hot here. Yeah. How hot is it? How hot hot is is it, Deb? It is ridiculously hot, and I think that Tallahassee is one of the hotter places in the country for humidity. And they they even said it's the third most humid, sweaty city in the country, and that's nothing to be proud of, but we are. Did you grow up there? No, I'm from the Midwest. I grew up in Chicago and St. Louis. Okay. And now Not here. humid places either. <laughs> right, right. Toast you know. I hate humidity. I really do. I yeah, can't stand it. It's true. He gets really cranky when things are steamy and humid. Like when we have humidity here, you, you'd think it would be the dry heat by your standards. No, yeah. In the summer. But, you, but you're so rainy. You know... Oregon's but it's the dry deceiving. rain. It's Oregon the dry is deceiving. Rain. Oregon is wet when it's raining and it's dry when it's not. And it sounds so simple, but it really it, we don't get a lot of humid heat here. We get a lot of dry heat and a lot of rain. And we get so much rain most of the year, but summer's pretty dry here. Mm. As it's going For, into the ninety 
high 90s this weekend. Yeah. Oh, I need weather report music, right? Diddly, diddly, diddly. No. Tallahassee <laughs> is humid and hot. Portland, Oregon is dry and hot. <laughs> That's it. That was a nice That recap. didn't sound like a weather report. That sounded like a sex report. Dry and hot? Need lubricant? <laughs> Wet and hot. <laughs> Clearly, people in Tallahassee are saucier than people in Portland. Juicy. <laughs> Juicy. I'm sorry, did, did did Fred the agent just blush? The guy with the thing so in his no, ear? I have to ask Deb a very important question. Please do. I, I imagine her in like this diner eating a patty melt with agents surrounding her going, are you done with the podcast? Okay, we need to go. No, no, this is important. <laughs> a few months ago... You did something that scared me. You went to an Indigo Girls concert. I know. Oh, it scared me. It scared you? It scared me. When I saw, I, I think I read the initial post where you were joking about going. Mm-hmm. And then you wound up with tickets. I did. And I think you wound I'm, up in a bar across the street or something. You, you live blogged the whole thing. Why don't you tell us about your experience of going to the Indigo Girls concert? I was scared for you the whole you time. Know, <laughs> thank you. It's see another reason to blog because then you have people rooting for you, looking out for you when you go into dangerous foreign lands like that. Mm-hmm. I, I get into so much trouble, you know, being being honest and just saying what I think, and it swims around. Tennessee is a small town, mm-hmm. and some people don't quite understand that if you don't want to play along with the party line and and. Indigo girls are sacred cows to to the dyke community. They are really, really important cultural figures to many women. So I was really crossing some lines when when I um, said what I really think about their music and how that shouldn't be the most exciting thing that people are talking about mm-hmm. in Tallahassee. Not that that much happens. We're not exact. I don't know. Maybe we are the Portland of Florida, but Florida... I mean, Florida's the armpit of the country, so so that's not saying much. I always thought Texas was the armpit, but I'm not going to argue with you because I've never been to Florida. Well, I guess, I don't know, maybe, yeah, it, it, it <laughs> carries along the Gulf Coast. We're, we're pretty, we're the ghetto, we're the, well, we're the Maury Povich of the country. Oh. You know, we're the, we're the, we're the train wreck slum that you... You you want to watch it because it's on the daytime and you think I can let my kids here I'm, mm-hmm. and my kids can watch this, but then you realize no, no, I can't. No, not yeah. Here. So uh, that was a big deal in town. Everyone was talking about it, and and I wasn't going to go, but then I realized I could just go and watch people in line and look at mm-hmm. look at how excited people were, and and that led into people thinking I really wanted to go and give me tickets, and then I I made my girlfriend come and at that. She didn't want to do that, but she did it to support me as my Aww. live blogging debut. That's so sweet. And um, it was it it wasn't even there wasn't even anything good enough to live blog. It was just a lot of people happy with the Indigo Girls, and it it's scary how much is not out there. It's 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 a void. It's yeah. A void. So. But you faced you your fears, careful. and you went. To I the made show. it. I made it back out alive. I made it. You know, with some sense of discerning ability. I didn't get co-opted in. I I kept my standards and I made it back out. Woohoo. Dr. Normal's looking at me like I don't understand. Uh, I'm looking very confused. What are you confused about? Uh Indigo I don't know. What am I confused about? Do you know who the Indigo girls are? Uh their girl band. It's like much like the runaways. It's like a music icon for the lesbian <laughs> community. Yeah, okay. And and for my friend Chad. Well, what didn't happen when you went to the Indigo Girls concert? For all the guys out um, there who don't understand. Good mu- good music or entertainment. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Okay, thank you. And she didn't get sucked in to I the thank Indigo you. Girls. And so does Agent Fred. Monster. Right. I, I, I kept my um, journalis- journalistic remove and was able to report on the scene without being co-opted in. Gotcha. That's, gotcha. That's hard when you're in a sub-community because... You have to be strong not, not to be drawn in. Mm-hmm. You really do. But you're a Frank Zappa <laughs> fan. Well, that I mean, who isn't? Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I know I know a couple people who aren't huge Frank Zappa fans. But not me. 
Not you, no. I'm a huge Frank Zappa. No. I know one person in particular who, if you turn Frank Zappa music on, she makes a really bad face and then seeks to hit someone. Well, it's not the Indigo Girls, that's the thing. She, I don't know if she likes the Indigo Girls either. Maybe the Indigo I don't Girls think, should the, cover Frank Zappa. I don't think there's a correlation oh between gosh. Frank Zappa and the Indigo Girls. I'd love I think to hear you the, just like to talk about I would Frank love Zappa. to hear the Indigo Girls do titties and beer. Really, think about it. <laughs> Have you ever heard the Indigo Girls? Dynamo Hum? <clears throat> This would actually would, be very funny. <laughs> I'd love to hear the Frank Zappa do I Went to the Mountain. <laughs> oh, there you go. I think that would be better. Unfortunately, I don't think that's yeah, going to happen yeah, given his current musical yeah, unfortunately, making state Frank's from the musical grave. Output yeah, output kind of went with his death. R.I.P. Right. Frank. Sad thing. I, I had the wonderful pleasure as a teenager to see him live once, and it was a, one of the best concerts I'd ever seen. Wow. Yeah. So, so we've now covered one of the worst concerts you've ever seen. That's a good question. What's what is the best concert you've ever seen? Oh wow. Well, I have very very typical eighties taste. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't get away from it. I, I there's I've been exposed to lots of great things and have lots of experiences, but I gotta say that in the eighties, you you two spoke to me. Oh yeah. And and I had a, a spiritual moment at a U two conference that. Um, since I don't alter my mind as strongly as I used to before, I will probably never be surpassed. Mm. So I, I have a question about you 2 I'm glad you brought you 2 up. Have they sold out? I mean, have oh, they really gone? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. But they, but in a, in a way that makes sense because they just mirror the culture for whatever time frame they're in. And so it's, I think it's appropriate that they've sold out. You, you know what I don't like about, like, Bono is that every time you turn around on Google News or something, Bono's hanging out with Bill Gates at Davos <laughs> and they're like selling red fucking iPods and it's just, uh, it just doesn't, I don't know, it's just me, you know? I mean, I, I, you know, hey, it's probably a great cause and everything and, and Bill Gates has a billion dollars and now he quit Microsoft and he's, you know, going to do philanthropy and Bono's trying to do good things. I mean, I, I shouldn't be that critical. But it just kind of leaves me kind of cold, you know. And I remember back in the day in the 80s where Bob Geldof of the Boomtown Rats, who, who started Live Aid and all that stuff, you know, he kicked it all off. He was like the real deal, you know. He was actually out there doing stuff. And then, you know, everyone glommed on and, you know, and then they did that, you know, we are the world and all that crap, you know. We are and, the world. and it just... I don't know, you know, kind of going living through that period we in the eighties. But U 2s very first now. album, U two the the de- their debut album kicked ass. That was an awesome album. I loved their very first album when I heard. I remember when I was like, I was like in college, I think. The Joshua Tree or no, 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 no. It was their very first album. It was much younger than you. Bad. I think I was like <laughs> at putting <laughs> things in. I was order. like a senior in high school, or I was like a freshman in college. So what album it was it then? It was awesome. It's the one with the kid. Was it war. You war. Uh, Might have been war. Yeah, yeah. I think it was war. Do you know, Deb? I think you're right with the with the child with the bomb yeah scene. with the yeah, red. It was a great yeah. album. That was a fantastic because yeah. nobody. I mean, the thing is that album came out in the '80s and nobody had that sound, and it was like right. You heard it and you were like, wow. That's a great sound. But, you know, I, I, I like, so I personally, especially in the 80s, I like bands who do some albums and then just totally get angry with each other, uh, beat each other up and leave and never come back. And then you have then those don't. special albums that you love and cherish and, you know, they're not like 80 years old on a comeback and, tour. And it's not tainted by their pretentious evolution. Exactly. Into- Exactly. Pretend policy makers. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm in Davos now. I think we'll release a new album and talk about, I don't know, how CEOs are ravished with, you know, backdating stock options. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bitter match? Wow, you know. <laughs> Doc Normal goes off on Strange Love Live. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but, um, we'll be doing two nights in Vegas next week. Thank you. And here I thought I'd have nothing to talk about. Yeah, he's always so concerned. I have nothing to say. 
What do I bring to the show? Why don't you find a nice young little whipping boy that you can use as your co-host and I'll just push buttons. I need to go back to pushing buttons. <laughs> I like it when you push the, you know, verbal buttons as well, babe. The v- 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 what button? Verbal. The v- button? Okay. Verbal, not uh-huh. ver. What are you... Crazy. Never mind. Go back to pushing your little buttons. Who is Kaiser Sosa? Kaiser Sosa. Yeah. We're not going to tell that secret because what if someone Verbal hasn't... Kint. Oh, God. You just... are such a prick. <laughs> You're a giant <laughs> cocksucker. What is wrong with you? Sorry. Okay. Have you ever seen The Usual Suspects, Deb? Yes. Sorry. Well, see. See, I'm glad that you've seen it because if you hadn't and then you wanted you to watch it, then my it out. darling little husband there. It's like a 20 year old movie, though. I mean, I like, don't care. You know, I didn't see it until well after it had come out. And if someone had told me, I would have been freaking pissed off. It doesn't piss me off to hear the ending of things because I can never remember. Oh, I, I always remember, remember. I remember shit that I don't need to remember and that I don't want to remember. For example, today I was sitting in the backyard with one of my friends and we were sitting outside with my daughter and she had some of her My Little Ponies outside. And she, my friend picked one up and she was looking at the design on the pony's ass and that's how you tell what the pony's name is. And Of course. <laughs> Yeah, it's not their ass, it's their hind, whatever, their side, it's their ass. And each pony has a different cutie mark, which signifies its name. For those of you who don't know a lot about My Little Ponies, you're getting education. Don't we all have a little cutie mark? Well, one of Somewhere. them has fireworks on it. And I have fireworks my daughter, my cutie mark. I asked my daughter, do you remember that pony's name? And she said, fireworks. I said, no, it's Sparkleworks. And my friend asked me, don't you have better things to do with that portion of your brain? No, I don't have better things to do with that portion of my brain. I've tried for years to apply my brain to better things. It wants to remember the names of My Little Ponies and other (laughs) irrelevant information. So the chat room is talking about the late George Carlin's seven words. Oh, yeah, I can see. Censored, censored, censored. Were you a George Carlin censored, fan? Censored, censored, censored. Deb? I really wasn't. I feel nostalgic about his role in history because I've been told to in the last few weeks, but, uh, and I get it, but I truthfully, I found him really annoying. Really? Well, uh, really. Well, which comedians do you love? Oh, gosh. Sam Kinison? The late Sam Kinison, maybe? Oh, he was obnoxious. I mean, he was yeah. funny, but he was obnoxious. The late Andrew Dice Clay, perhaps. <laughs> Is he, he dead? Die? Oh yeah, you he's didn't hear. not dead. Oh yeah, dude, no, are you messing with him. me? Yeah. No, is he dead? No, which comedians do you like? Deb, is he dead? Uh, I'm going to look it up. No, no, he's not dead. He's, <laughs> he's really, he's kind of pudgy Vegas right now. Dude, I have. He's, he's in his, uh, his late Elvis years. Let's go look. Better you better be. Uh, but I, ne- I never think. I know you guys have played the the better alive game. I never think of any culture or literary person as dead. They they just seem very alive to me, and I don't want to know how they died. Oh, good point. That that's a that's Andrew. a good outlook. You know, they're never they're really dead, are they? They're they're I'm alive no. in the culture. Do, 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 do. Honey, I, I think he is alive. It was my ringer there. If he's dead, so so what? I don't know what to say. Do you have a Let's favorite see. comedian? Bill Cosby. Yeah, Bill Cosby is your favorite comedian, right? Why did you think he was dead? He's not dead. Cammy. His career is dead. Well, yeah, he's are and you, you know deserves Are you listening so. to the show? Um. So wait, we were talking about Bill Cosby. Okay, go ahead. So, so who's your favorite comedian, Bill Cosby? I don't know. I can't think of anyone right now. Do you like Eddie Izzard? Oh, I love him. Oh, Yay! there we go. See, I need, I I love him. Yes, he's he's my favorite comedian. I think he's mine too. Nate's he's, favorite is Margaret Cho. I think he was at like. Davos hanging out with Bono and Bill Gates, actually. Who, Eddie? Yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah, you might, Look you it might up. be right about that. And then they all died in a plane yeah. crash over <laughs> Geneva. Look it up. I'm telling but you, look was, it up. You guys out there, Google. Google it now. It's the truth. He was the only one wearing stilettos, though. He makes me so much want to have a cross dressing boyfriend. Really? If I ever have a boyfriend again, I think he's just hot. With his little Asian-style dresses and his high heels and his glossy he's, little lips. Right, but his, his, his 
just macho, rock I, oh. build. Mm hmm. You know, I don't think he looks that good in drag. I, I love the his fact, comedy. The fact I think isn't he's that he looks awesome. good in it. The fact is that he's so comfortable, comfortable and so masculine in it. Well, he could just do what most guys do and wear a terry cloth bathrobe without underwear and then just not, be comfortable on stage. There's no effort in that. Some is that what clothes. your dress is? No. Uh, no. A little robe. No. no, I think he's because, no, of, a, too uptight because for that. of a childhood trauma. I think <laughs> my he's dad used to wear bathrobes. that all the time. Trust me, I don't. Man. Can we tell the, the story? story? No. Tell the story. No. One. Tell the story, Mr. Chaos. No. If you don't tell it, it's I'm going to. It's actually somewhat an Eddie Izzard. It's very akin to an Eddie Izzard routine, actually. I'm going to give you one chance to tell the story, and then I'm no. going to tell my version of it. No. What I recall. You tell the story, or I'm going to tell it. Uh, is Alex from iPhone phone podcast you, calling in? Should we talk about technology now? You brought up the terry cloth <laughs> bathrobe. I hear Toonlet's doing well. Is it Toonlet on the line? Tell the story talk that makes me never want to hear the phrase meat and potatoes again. No. <laughs> tell the story. There's been too much buildup. You have to tell it now. I can't tell it. I can tell it. You'd probably tell it better than I do. Okay, there may be some technical inaccuracy because when this happened, I was not alive. When when Dr. Normal... Neither was Andrew Dice Clay. When Dr. Normal was a little boy, he was sitting at the breakfast table one day with his family. He was eating breakfast. What were you eating for breakfast? I don't know. Okay. Well, you know, this is traumatizing. Oftentimes you remember Sausage small details. And some dumplings. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so the phone rang and his dad was talking on the telephone. And for some reason, little Dr. Normal felt it important to crawl underneath the table. And when he looked up, <laughs> there between his dad's legs. <laughs> Oh. was what's behind, you know, between a dad's legs. His dad was wearing a terry cloth bathrobe and nothing else. So he saw, oh, Jesus. That scared me. So he saw what he described the first time he told me this horror story was his dad's meat and potatoes, his dad's hairy meat and potatoes. And now... Much, much like a Eddie Izzard. And it horrified him and terrified him and scarred him for life. And, and Understandably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. And now I can't stand the phrase meat and potatoes. It makes me just dissolve into fits of giggles every time someone says meat and potatoes. <laughs> or bangers and mash. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's well, just... mash would be a little harsh. <laughs> well, I Actually, I like bangers and mash. But, yeah, meat and potatoes, that, oh. Yeah. Wow, that's a picture. Yeah. Well, 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 poor Dr. Normal, no wonder you turned out straight. Exactly. How could oh, he? Baby. How could he ever have hoped to, to be gay and comfortable no. with another man's genitalia? No, it's not going to happen. I should be thankful for that scarring That's childhood true. moment. Well, I mean, or at least like you know, shave, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what prompted you to have such good grooming habits, honey? <laughs> <laughs> I will never look like that man. Never. I will never, ever, ever. Oh Lord. Uh, this show has gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've made my husband uncomfortable. I'm so happy right blushing? now. <clears throat> yes, you're bright red. If only the camera pointed at him, you could see how pink his cheeks are right now. Yeah. Back to our lovely guest. So, Deb, uh, <laughs> what are your grooming habits? <laughs> <laughs> I love product. I'm a product whore. Are you? I love products. I don't. I don't usually use them up, so I have a lot of them around. I have a closet full of products that I love. Grooming products. Mm -hmm. I I can pour over Sephora's catalog for hours. It makes me so happy. And I pick my hotels based on the products they give. So Ooh. yeah, I'm all about the products. So, is there some way to find out, or do you just remember from past experience what hotels have what products? But, uh, yeah, I've got uh, one of my obsessions is hotels. I can remember a lot about hotels mm -hmm. and chains and like the biggest, biggest porn conversation I've had recently is when my girlfriend told me she finally joined the program mm -hmm. and that she's double dipping. To me, that is so hot. I love, love my hotel miles and products and rooms, which is good because I travel a bit. 
Do you travel for work or because you enjoy travel? I travel for work a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. My secret work. Secret work. Yeah, we have secret work in this house, too. I understand that completely. But, um, so, yeah, I love I love the products, and I love a good shower, and as many showers as I can take. Yeah, showers I'm are good. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a washing person as well. Washing myself. I'm not really great at washing houses, but good at <laughs> washing me. That's what matters. Keep it clean. Exactly. It's an important thing. I hate it when I say exactly. I didn't think you'd ask me about my grooming, but I did, I did find myself today thinking about, think, feeling like I was going on a first date. You know how you do the first date eating? You really don't eat heavy because it's mm-hmm. a first date. Mm-hmm. You don't know where it's going to go. Exactly. And, and I, You're all excited. I'm wearing, my, Everyone I'm wearing that, good undies right? today. You don't want to like yeah, eat the, the the um you don't eat like the 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 um you know the goulash or something. <laughs> yeah. like, no, you get you know, bad sitting breath. Sitting on the couch, and, yeah. and, oh, you yeah. know, someone's going down on you. Like, and excuse attractive. me, yeah. I have gas now. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, none exactly. of that. None of that. That's no none good. None of that, and the good the good first date grooming for a, a few a, crackers a few. and you know a little um you know. San Pellegrino. Well, you you have to eat something because you don't want your stomach to make that That's ho- true. noise. That's true. It always sucks to have sex with somebody whose stomach is growling too. Yeah. It's like you know you're halfway through, and I I think I've actually done this before <laughs> in my life where you're halfway through and you're like, uh, do you need something to eat, honey? Do you need a you break? Know, do, 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 take a little break. Take a little break. Have a slice of pizza or something, and we can get back to this. The effort that we put into things. It's the amazing. Thinking. It's We're because I thinking. care. Yeah. I I I kind of actually I ate something I probably wouldn't have eaten on my on a first date though. Tonight? Yeah. Oh hell no. Yeah, what I wouldn't <laughs> I mean the salad was fine but I had leftovers from the Greek restaurant last night. You had masaka. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mm-hmm. wouldn't. A Greek but lasagna casserole damn, thingy. Damn, it was good. Yeah. Damn, it was good. Do we want to talk about the first time we attempted to have sex? When when I fell asleep because you were in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that was the good. That was the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was really late, and I was really tired. And he really and needed really to go, to, to, the go to the bathroom. bathroom. Was he grooming? You were over grooming. No, he needed to use the bathroom no, in to... the way that men, you know, sometimes mm. need to spend a long time in the bathroom. I'm taking the New York Times in here. I'll be back in. Two hours. You know, and I'd gotten up really early to, to, you know, to open the cafe that I was working at, and it was really late. It's amazing we got married. Yeah, it is. We actually showed up late to our own wedding. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a different story. Yeah, we did. I mean, you know, we got married on a boat. They had to wait for us. They couldn't leave dock without us or anything, but we, we got there 15, 20 minutes after we were supposed to be there early for photos. <laughs> So uh, presumably you, you got around to having sex. Yes, we did at some point, and no, and never. then we found Actually, that we rather happened. rather uh, enjoyed it. And We're still then trying we had to get again. that going. Yeah, no one's going to buy that. We have a kid, and I, you know, <laughs> Artificial unless I had sex with someone else to get the kid, that's always conceivable. turkey baster. No, I don't. I don't like the turkey baster talk. Yeah, turkey basters are not an attractive thing to put inside your body. Unless you're not usually no. Trying to have a kid or something, I guess. Well, they should think they should come up with a line of, of more attractive oh. room inseminator vehicles. We could, we could do that. We could do a Strange Love branded one for you. There that you would go. be good marketing. That would actually be really good. Mm. We could just you know stick the logo on the bulby part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. I just like to stick the logo on stuff. So you know anything we can put the Strange Love logo on is fine with me. We yeah, just, you're getting some good pimped out stuff, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I've got my beautiful new messenger bag, and we have my stickers and coffee mugs. And today, one of my friends demanded a sticker to put on his car, so that was very exciting. That's a commitment. Yeah, it is. I, I have an Obama bumper sticker, but I haven't put it put it anywhere yet. Yeah, I gave him a table. bunch of money and I didn't get a damn bumper sticker or a t-shirt. Or How did you thing. get the bumper sticker? I bought it in an airport in D.C. Oh, see, yeah. so she went and bought it. Yeah. there You can't get you can't get any Obama bling. No. Well, right now, if you donate $15 to his campaign, you apparently get a car magnet. 
<laughs> yeah, but eleven of that dollars goes to Hillary's debt. So, I know. Um, I don't know what how we're going to get around that because I don't really want to pay off her debt. Neither do I. It's it's the American people's fault that she went into debt. I don't think so. It's Obama's and I'm not fault. About no, it's Bill's money. fault. But that's beside the point. That's, not, that's my point. Is it's not like whose <laughs> fault Bill is Clinton's it that she fault. went into debt? Oh yeah, you, know? you could be president. It's okay. It's <laughs> I don't okay, mind huh? paying off if Obama goes into a little debt with the campaign. I'm like, no, yeah, Monica yeah. would never be president. You could be president though. I'm sorry. I'm, that was crass. Yeah, it's okay. It's Friday night. We're a little bit crass. Welcome to the crass cast. That's okay. Yeah, no, because we've been doing too many tech podcasts where we have to, you know, reserve crass. our crassness. Um, so, so I, I, Twitter tweeted something today because I feel strongly about this in regards to Obama. And um, so uh, the Barack Obama Twitter said, you know, we're announcing unity and unity, you know, and they did like the thing with him and Hillary and unity, New Hampshire. It was that it, New Hampshire. Right. Is that correct? OK, uh, I sure. don't know. I, Andrew Clay, Dice Clay <laughs> is dead. But anyway, um, and I tweeted back to Barack Obama. I said, you know, that's really nice. Unity's great. But why don't you take the weekend, the the holiday, the July Fourth holiday, to rethink your FISA stance, because that really pisses me off. I think that all the politicians need to stand up to the Federal Intelligence Surveillance Act, and what's being proposed in the Federal Surveillance, or Federal Intelligence Surveillance Act. Um, because you know we're turning into the Soviet Union, and I know, and they actually postponed it until after uh, the Fourth of July. Um, but there, there's been some some initial thoughts that Obama was going to endorse it and vote for it, and I really think folks need to take a stand. I, it pisses me off because it's essentially like you know your phone company to can spy on you and. They don't get prosecuted for it, and the unite and the government can look at all your credit card transactions and everything if they want to, without a court reviewing this, you know. And it kind of pisses me off. I think I think we're turning into the Soviet Union, and I I I, I sense this like Obama kind of moving to the middle to the right to get elected, and I don't mm-hmm. like that. I really don't like that, because the thing that attracted to me to him you know as a candidate where he got my support was his stance on the Iraq war I think and I think you're right about a lot of his support and centrist politics is not where it's at is what people have said Hillary is centrist and and people chose not to support her candidacy and that's right we had we had uh, Edwards a, a number of people would have gotten the support if that were important and pulled in pulled in the more traditional liberal support so i don't think it's a good tax either well and 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 i know that moveon.org is is a little bit unhappy about this right now and and good for them i mean you know it's like they should and they should put the pressure on because you know what's the phrase that we have in the united states it's like you know live dangerously live free or whatever you know i mean it's the whole it's the whole re, you know. It's like at some point you have to take risk in your life, and yes, there are is the potential for terrorism. Yes, there is this potential, but at the same time, we have freedoms that are constitutionally granted, and that's what our country was founded on. And you know, I mean, it, 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 you know, if you look at the trend, um, and granted, you know, no one wants another nine eleven, but at the same time. Um, we need to start protecting our rights because a- anytime something big happens like that, a government's pretty much clamped down on everyone's rights, on every citizen's rights. And and um, I mean, I, I Obama is my candidate for protecting that. And if he can't do that, I don't know. I don't know where my support lies. Um, well, of, honey, you know, I mean, let let's face it. Your monetary support might not lie with Obama, but the fact of the matter is is that if it's Obama or McCain, 
Right, but but if you can't tell the difference between the two candidates and their policies, then you have to question what the hell's going on. We have, I mean, one of my problems with the American democracy is we have a a viable two-party system. And every Western democracy, I think, arguably has more than a two-party system and has to form coalition, coalition governments with other you know other political factions uh, and and that to me is 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 more indicative of democracy than what we have in the United States okay ladies and gentlemen welcome to political talk on strange love live that's your cue to sex it up hi <laughs> my name is Gammy Gayas and when i have to talk about politics i get really hot because I think I turned off my air conditioner. <laughs> that was that was the best I could do. That wasn't, you know. I could see if Deb likes uh, Doctor Who. I never got into Doctor Who. I, I just never did. And I know there's a new Doctor Who, but yes, I haven't, there is. haven't seen it. I hear it's hot. It's really good. Well, the first the first season of the new Doctor Who, really, really talented actor... Really, really, really grumpy. Yeah, is I think what I'm going to go for. He did a great job, and I got super attached to him. And then when he did his transformation into the next Doctor, I was really upset. And I was all up in arms. And I was like, no, you can't take him away. I love the new Doctor. And then I was like, oh, but the new Doctor is kind of cheeky. And I kind of like him. And then I developed a mad crush on the new Doctor, so now... I'm hoping that they'll never take him away. And they will. They will at some point. He's going to have to regenerate into a new body, and then I'm going to be pissed off. But I have no doubt that after I'm pissed off sufficiently, I'll then find something to like about the next Doctor. But in the meantime, I'm really you, enjoying it. But if you look at his ass, you mm-hmm. can tell what what his name is, what type of Doctor he is. Fantastic. Maybe he'll be a, a Farkleberry. A Farkleberry Doctor? Sparkle something? Sparkle works? Oh, Sparkle works. Sparkle works. <laughs> yes, if you check the doctor's ass, you can find out what his cutie name is. Cutie name? Yeah, well, it's a cutie mark. It's balls. That's an, uh, I'm obsessed with that now. I, w- I want to know what other species have cutie marks. I don't know. That's you, an You've got question. some cutie marks. Yeah. You're an ink girl. I'm an inky ink ink person. I am. It's true. Do you have any tattoos? I don't. I'm, I've been ambivalent. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I find if you're ambivalent, then it's best not to get them. Which is probably a good thing because if they would, they would be outdated by the time they were done. Not for me, and I'd be regretting them and. Yeah, I, them in. I really, I, I know some people with tattoos that really think everyone should get them, and they're very adamant about that. And I really think that people know whether or not they should have a tattoo. I can't even commit to a bumper sticker, so I shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't ink my body. It's, it's often very interesting that I have a lot of tattoos, and I look, I look like the much less conservative member of my household. Whereas my husband often looks very, you know, kind of corporate tech guy, clean cut, no tattoos, no piercings. And, but and he's a freak, right? Yeah, he's a bigger freak than I am. It's there's, good to pass. There's, there's just no doubt, really. What do you think, honey? Yeah, the more conservative you look, the freakier you are. That's not always a positive thing. Oh, I'm I mean, sorry. Are we <laughs> back to political talk now? <laughs> in Welcome your case, that's talk. a nice thing. <laughs> it's in the air. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we need to talk more about politics, though. I think it's okay. I think you need to come back to the conversation, Dr. Normal. No, I, I just want to... So what's on your mind, Deb? I mean, what's 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 really like... What are you blogging about? What's your like your big big thing is it is it politics is it what is it is it the indigo girls is it the fact that (laughs) andrew dice clay is dead um (laughs) so dead and i miss him i mourn him i mourn his loss and it it just won't be the same you know it's just whatever's in the wind and i think politics can't help but be in the wind this is a big election it really is for a lot of reasons uh, they're high stakes and i'm with you that 
we got to be done with this primary crap so we can talk about real issues. But the, and the real important big issue that we can finally talk about without Hillary being in the race is that Obama is hot. He is fucking hot. Yes, he is. And so the you know our country is going to be facing that again. Does sex talk in the ballot box? I think it might, and I think it's really interesting that we have a African American candidate bringing that forward for everyone. I, I love watching what happens when people grapple with his hotness. Doesn't he have hot lips? Uh, there's just not a whole lot about that man that isn't hot, actually. I'm saying. He's, he's a beautiful man. <laughs> I would make love to Obama rather than okay, McCain. Oh, yeah. I don't See? really think that's the contest. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no contest. And we couldn't talk about that Hold before on. because the, the feminist politics of Hillary just oh, messed that Jesus all up. Christ. It just didn't feel right, but now we oh. can I'm sorry, I missed what you just said. I was so sick. upset by the thought of naked John McCain that I... In a terry cloth <laughs> robe. I, mean, oh, I bet Jesus. you know he has one. You know it. He probably has like a 10. Short ter- I thought you were freaking oh, about your God. husband making love to a presidential candidate. <laughs> no. <laughs> that no. wasn't Hillary. Oh, ew. God, please. I'd so much rather you be with Obama than Hillary. God. Oh, Again, God. with the nasty... I'm sorry. No, I was just so upset about... people will not call again to have a party (laughs) at our house. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Did you guys do the podcast about having sex with our candidate? Yeah, uh, forget about that thing about having the neighborhood party We frown upon that. We frown upon talking about about having sex with Obama. But send us your money. We dig your money. Dig your podcast, dig your money, and no parties for the candidate. Isn't... Doesn't McCain have the hot wife? Am I not thinking clearly? Yeah. Yeah, she... She's got some vibe going on. Do you think she has sex with him? She's like 20, 30 years younger than him, right? Look, if the man was in the Hano Hilton in Vietnam, God bless him. I mean, have a hot wife. I mean, I still wouldn't. I wouldn't have sex with John McCain. And not just because his policies upset me and because I think he might be a lunatic. No, never mind. There's something kind of creepy about him. And you would probably have to have a lot. I mean, each session would last a long time because it would definitely be via Viagra sex. Yeah, definitely. Ugh. And then, you know, those persistent erection problems. That Do you have inside about. information? Dan? And then I'd have to get him to the hospital in case his erection oh lasted more than four hours. Do we? Do we need to Skype in Drudge? Paper. Yeah. Dan, do we need be... to Skype Skype in Drudge tonight for the for this show? Do what? you have inside information? <laughs> inside information. Well, he's like, no. what, what? how old is he, 72? Yeah, he's an old guy. But he's spry. Look at him, he's spry. Yeah, but... He's spry. He's old. He's Do we spry, really want to elect someone to office knowing that the vice president could likely take over? Yeah, he hasn't picked a vice president. That's, you know... Neither of them have. Yeah. Oh, who's who's Ob- okay? There we so go. This who's is a great Obama question. going to pick who, as vice president? Who do you think he is going to pick, and who would you like I to see him? I say it's the him? Indigo Girls. What do you <laughs> say? I wanted to follow the question. It's a two-part question. Who do you think he'll pick, and who would you like him to pick? I don't know. I've I've, I've been swayed a lot of different ways on this. I think um, I think he's going to pick John Edwards. Mm. I think he is going to that. Interesting. I, there are some reasons I think that that's a good idea. Edwards has been kind of underground and quiet lately, though. Yeah. He really has been. But I really think that, especially given the race card uh, in the South, Obama is a black mm-hmm. man. But he has mm-hmm. tons of support in the South. Yes, he does. But there are some people that would prefer a yeah. white Christian president. And yeah. I think that having John Edwards in a VP slot would help him with those people. You know people. what? And that's a write-off, mm-hmm. and I think I think in the 21st century that those people are a write-off, and I think the polls are showing that that's not you know what? as much. I mean, those, when you, when those you're people. when you're going against John McCain, who is a yeah, white okay. Christian man, you've got to take that into so consideration. You live in West Virginia, fine, whatever. Thank you very much. Um, but I don't think Edwards. I don't know. I I don't know why. Well, but he's been really quiet. Why do you think Edwards? I want to know why you think Edwards. Is it because he was a fan of the late Andrew Dice Clay? Exactly. Yeah, they're in the Brotherhood. They have these secret rings, these Andrew Dice Clay rings. And uh, you can follow the secret myth of that and see that they are connected. And they were complete misogynists too, right? Right. It was preordained that they take over the world from the women. 
from the women. I, still I think that he'll play. I think they. I think they think he'll play at the Democrat party. The Democratic Party thinks he'll play in the South, and uh, then they and they might strategically go for that. Plus, he's not threatening. Obama really needs a, a vice president that will let him find his presidency. Mm-hmm. So that's a tricky, tricky call. Someone so, to pull in votes, but so also I, let him find his leadership. So I guess this is a good question because you are. I mean, we're we're here in Little Lebanon, right? Um, literally, that's what the cool Bush bill. Bush family called Portland, Oregon. Yeah, they don't like it here. Um, back in the Bush senior days, by the way, goes back to history. Um, wow. Little Beirut. I'm sorry. Uh, Portland was known as Little Beirut to the Bush Senior family because when Bush Senior would come here, like for some junket or something, we'd have all these protests against God knows what, right? Um, Speak in your mind. Yeah, and, and well, and like George W. Like I don't know, showed up in like Hillsborough or something, but um, but in the South, and you are in technically in the South. Of the United States, do you think there's a lot of racism in the election? I mean, do you or do you sense that it, things have changed? I'm curious. I think things have changed, but I think we cannot underestimate racism in this country. I think it. I think definitely in the South and also in rural America, if you travel outside of populated areas, it's intense. It's extremely intense. If you go into any high school in the South, you'll you'll get race politics immediately, and it's and although there's definitely social and cultural change, the way that that plays out for politics is going to be really interesting to watch. See, and I I think what's interesting um, because the Northwest, I I've you know obviously growing up in the Northwest, it's rather homogenous here. And and we've had our uh, racism issues in the Northwest um, over the years. Um, living in Portland, I mean, there's some historic events that have happened in the last 20 years that really turned the tide um, on racism. Um, but um, but you know, I mean, uh, uh, the order <laughs> was headquartered here in the Great Northwest. You know, in Oregon, Washington State, Idaho State, you know, state of Idaho. Um, so we, we, we've had that. And we have, I think in the, in the Pacific Northwest, we have um, less of a, certainly uh, a, less of a population of African Americans than is in the South or in the Midwest, if you look at it demographically. So I've always kind of been under the impression that tolerance is had a tendency to be a little bit more actually um, in the South and in the Midwest versus the Northwest where it's, it seems like the Northwest is so relaxed in West coast, but at the same time, I think the real tolerance on the ground is more in the South and in the Midwest. Um, I don't know. I think, well, what I think the only thing that might be different about the coast and the South is that it's an issue of class. And the West has a much higher influence of the creative class or the alternative class, you know, mm-hmm. impoverished by choice or yeah. creative and um, have, have a mix of liberal politics without high incomes or, or with high inherited incomes. But in the South on class lines and in rural areas on class lines, there really isn't much traction in, in, um, in cultural movement between people in a lower in, in lower socioeconomic classes. I think you're right. I think in educated class and high, uh, higher income class there is. And, we, and that's great because that's a great example of where we can go. And I think we see that in Obama's candidacy and in funders' willingness to accept him and party leaders. Well, because he gets, he gets support about among upper class, you know, whites, right? Right. I mean, you know. But uh, but I don't I don't know what happens when, when we'll really hit a real election and try to cross cross class lines like that. I, it I don't seems know. That's like what the, makes it so interesting. Yeah, it seems like the momentum's there, though. I mean, uh, at least among younger generations, it's um, you know. Um, well, that's one of the interesting that's the things help. about him, though, is the younger generations. It's, 
it seems like he's been successful in getting younger voters in um, and actually getting them to cast ballots and getting them to, to speak their mind and to be involved in the process. And sometimes that's a big problem. Thank God, though, because these baby boomers need to be put in their place. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of, tired <laughs> Mr. of following baby boomer. them. <laughs> tired of following them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think that's actually the whole. I uh, see. I think the whole baby boomer thing cut in the whole Hillary versus Obama um, campaign. I really do Good. because Hillary and Bill really were in the baby boomer uh, camp. And Obama's, you know, doing, I think Obama's kind of picked up the mantle from um, what Howard Dean started, right, with the, with the younger generation, Generation X and, and whatever we call those generations. And uh, I think that was the real cut, you know. And, you know, at the end of the day, you've, if you're doing politics, if you're doing anything, you need to get the new blood into your movement. I mean, that's all there is to it, you know. Um, granted that older people have more time on their hands to participate in politics. And that's one thing that um, annoys me sometimes about younger folks is, look, you've got to participate in this process. But, um, but we see a lot of it now among younger generations. And I speak as a really weird person because I'm in a particular year where you could define me as the la- the very last baby boomer or the very first generation X. It's I, I'm actually in that year where they have no idea if I'm, you know, the last baby boomer. In You're kind of an in between boy. Uh, 1964. I'm 64. What's that? Jeez. That's my birth year. You're in the 64 club. Yeah. Woohoo! We're hot. Cool aren't people we? born Are we in hot 64. or what? Look at I'm us. saying. How hot are we? Totally. Really, really cool people born in 64. What month? February. Oh, oh so you were so born close. right after me. I was born, I I was actually, uh, I'm not going to say exactly the I've day I was born. I've talked about it on my blog before, so just get over it. He was born on, on New Year's Day. I'm a New Year's baby. Oh, that's so cool. So you are Year of the Dragon. Look out. No wonder we Thank can't. you no, very much. No. Thank you. Yes. Technically speaking, we have this argument so often. Technically speaking, he was born in the year of the rabbit because the uh, the Chinese year doesn't start at the same time as the calendar year. I know. People tell me that, too, and I don't believe it. Because so you choose to be a dragon up, instead of a rabbit? Because we we grew up before the age of the Internet when you had to get your information from places, informal ephemera. And uh-huh. I learned my Chinese New Year's, probably my year of animals, probably, much like Mr. Chaos did, from Chinese placemats. I, I've always called him my darling in little... In Chinese restaurants, yeah. actually, when it was growing up. Right, <laughs> right. And so, you know, we have to trust what was given to us. I've always called him my little drabbit. <laughs> That's right, that's what it is. Yeah. No, I know, we, we actually are rabbits until a little bit after my birthday, and people have brought that up to me, but I continue to stay with the delusion of dragon because I like them better. Well, you can be a drabbit from now on. That's well, an incredibly uh, distinct... That works distinct animal. When you read the description, <laughs> it's like a little bit of both, right? Yeah. In, in in his case, he really does fall right between the two, um, description-wise. So that makes sense. You're the Capricorn. You, that's why you get all this podcast stuff done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he does. He does it get all. all done. Get her that's done. Candy. Get her done. Just get her done. Okay, no more of the I'm sorry. Of the no guy more talking about the South With no. the denim shirt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Cammie? When's your birthday? March 8th. Oh, you're Pisces. I am. <laughs> nice. Does that work? That's great. That's great. Does that work well, for we're, us? We're all three in a row. We've got Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Mm-hmm. Do we make go. a nice marriage? Ooh. Yes. She's lobbying to, to be able to join us on the That's IKEA hot. couch. I'm all for it. I'm hot. You know. And I was born in the year of the snake. Oh, mm-hmm. I could see that. Hey, 
Now, in the United States, people often look at snakes as a very negative thing. But in the Chinese zodiac, a snake is actually a, a very nice creature to be. Very sexy. Very, very earthy. Very strong and, yeah, earthy and good. Flexible. Yes. So, uh, Although, when I see snakes, I scream like a little girl and run away. You do. Um, if I'm not expecting to see them, if I know that there's going to be a snake, I'm okay. But not too long ago, I was walking to pick up my daughter from school, and there was a, a, a snake on the sidewalk. And I was stepping over it, one foot on either side of it when I saw it, and I screamed so loud, the a woman getting out of her car um, began to panic. <laughs> You blogged about this, didn't you? I did. It was the same you day did, that I yeah, was chased that was a by a raccoon. Story. Yeah. I was chased by a raccoon right. the same day. It was nature. Right. Nature had it out for Strange me that day. Nature. Yeah. Florida is so creepy with all, all its uh, vermin and snakes and lizards and big spat skinks on screens. It's prime it's primeval here. Large insects. So yeah, I don't like kind that. Of used to critters. That's one of the things I hated the most about Texas is that there were bugs, that you know, the size of your thumb. Oh yeah. And those weren't even big bugs. Those were uh, just that's bugs. That's just petite. <laughs> that's just a bug. What are you talking? It's a bug. If you can step on it and it'll kill it, it's just a bug. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. I I Never don't want to know. I. I, I happened to look down at the chat room briefly, and, and I don't even they know. They were talking about uh, snakes eating rabbits. Oh, hello. I just got Watch that. So you're a child of the 60s. Sort I am, of. I guess, technically, but I feel a bit really more culturally influenced by the 70s yes. and the 80s. Yes, 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 so do I. But I mean, but you can still lord it over our, our like people like <laughs> that we're married to, for in my example. And say, hey, man, I was there when Jimmy was playing, baby. Oh, no, I really wasn't. And then I can say, yeah, well. in my diaper, but. Well, Elvis Presley died the year I was born. I remember when (laughs) Elvis Presley died. Um, Wow. Do you remember the. He's definitely dead. Yes. Yes. I'm sure of that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, him and Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. Right. Look it up. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, (laughs) Wait, I have an interesting anecdote. Okay. Um, It has to do with my child, though. I was sitting at the table the other day. At my child's school, for some reason, they have a full-size cardboard cutout of Elvis Presley. <laughs> I've never been clear on the f- reason that they have it, but that's fine Where? with me. At school, in the hallway. Oh, yeah, I want that. Yeah, they haven't... God, I want to steal that. Yeah, no, don't steal it. Now everyone will know who took it. Uh, you, uh, so wait a minute, let's ask Deb on the Rocks. Beatles or Elvis? Uh, Beatles. Wow. Mm. You didn't have an uncle who was into Elvis like I did. Okay, so let me finish my Elvis story. So I'm sitting at the table with my daughter when she looks at me and says out of nowhere, Mommy, I heard that Elvis died on the toilet. Is that true? True. (laughs) It is true. I know, and I had to tell her, yes, it's true. Where did you hear it? She said, I don't know, but I heard it. That's great. Do people often die on the toilet? Some do. Traumatized. <laughs> yeah, I had Believe to explain me, more to people her. die on the toilet than they do in, uh, you know, airplane and car accidents, probably. I wonder how many people I, I die die on the toilet in an airplane. Look it up. So, to uh, recap for our audio listeners, um, so there's no more Mile High Club, and there are products in the Sky Miles for masturbation. Is that what you guys are saying? There you go. I, I think that, that masturbating in an airplane is a federal intelligence offense, actually. Homeland Security will bust is your it? ass for that. Ask, ask your friend, uh, ask uh, Fred, Agent Fred there, who's sitting I, next I to you. I think you're right. How I think can it's it be? very suspicious behavior. It's probably bugged, too. It's probably, they probably have cameras in there. Exactly. I could see how having sex with someone could be a problem, because I don't think you're supposed to have more than one person in the bathroom. But how could masturbating in an airplane bathroom be against the law? I'm sure it is. 
Because you're not supposed to spend a whole lot of time in the bathroom because it's next to the cockpit. Hey, it doesn't always and take way, me a whole lot of time. A cockpit, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know um, how long you'd have to spend in there. It's not like I'd be in there for an hour taking care I've of myself. I've been in there an hour before, and it, I wasn't masturbating. I was just like, you know, you were not in there for an hour. You know, sometimes you're traveling on business, and you know, you gotta. Uh, I hope I that know. airplane had more than one. Bathroom. Sometimes it's the best seat in the house. By the way. I'm I'm serious. On a commercial flight, sometimes the toilet in the bathroom <laughs> is the nicest seat in the house. Because you're Kinda sitting next to fat man nobody. and fat woman it's in the so, middle it's aisle. It's so loud in the bathroom. You know what? But it's all by yourself to yourself. I'm serious. Uh-huh. It's it's like it's You like, really can comfortably sit in a room that you know someone else has been shitting in. Have you in? ever have you ever sat in the middle aisle of an airport? Cramp At least airplane. they're not shitting in their seats. They People. could be. This, this is a gender difference, though. I don't think that most most women would really hang out longer than they need to in a in a porta potty, which no. is essentially what it is. It is. It's a flying porta potty. It's a flying porta potty with a is. sink. Okay. Well, and, I guess some porta potties have sinks. And in ladies them. and gentlemen, I choose the flying porta potty over <laughs> the sitting in the middle aisle between everyone cramming up against me and giving me Ebola or something. There could be and Ebola that, in the bathroom. No. You need to be collecting your miles so that you can get your upgrade. See, so you, it's all about the miles. The yeah, products and I know. the miles to really... So there's just lots of products on the plane is what you're telling us, right? If you, if you have an eye for it, there are products everywhere. Really? <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to start looking out for these products. I did. everywhere and they're free and I, def- I, I still do this obsessive thing even though I don't need the products and I can I go and buy full-size products if I want. If I'm in a hotel room for two or three days at a time, which I often am, I'll hide the products on the first day so that the maid restocks. See, I just like it's, free stuff, oh yeah, though, well, so I'm with you. I, yeah, I like all free that. stuff. Americans do oh, that. Good. It's like, I have oh. no towels and no soap and no shampoo. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Let's see. If you're Terrorists looking, if you're looking at the place. video feed, you can see an example of, of free stuff. That Oh, yeah. Show I don't need stuff. this. I ha- it's a hard hat from, from Vadoop from Lunch 2.0. I don't need a hard hat. When am I going to use oh, the hard minute, hat? Wait a minute. We're 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 um, renovating the upstairs bathroom. I think you need a Vadoop hard hat. Okay, from now on, when I work in the upstairs bathroom, I'll go and wear my Vadoop hard hat up there, and then exactly. I'll get so irritated and frustrated that I'll take the hat off so that I'm not sweating in it. I took it because I was like, "Oh, my daughter will like this." My daughter put it on for five seconds, and then she was finished with it, and so now it just sits down here in the studio. No, no, no. But it's it was too- free, and I freaking love it. Well, when when do you uh, when do you ever get a free hard hat at an event? Right? I don't. That's why I have it. I I like people to give me free stuff. That's why I have the stickers. I give the stickers to people because exactly. like gosh, people love free stuff. Have a sticker. Show them the, love the show them the coffee cup. Oh, the coffee. Show them the show the kids. Okay, so if you're but looking, they're not free. No, they're for drinking well, the, beverages and well, stuff in the house. Here. Do we have anything else? I I think we have a lot. We've talked a lot. Deb has not. <laughs> yeah, we have talked a lot. That sucks. Maybe maybe we should. It's getting late though. We're... What time is it over there? It is two thirty nine a.m. Cricket. Saturday. We're turning into the Bob Costas show, where we ask five minute questions for <laughs> a you know a a one line answer. Uh, yes, Bob. <laughs> I'm really proud that I know the different times. It took me a while to, to figure this out tonight. I'm bad with that. I, anytime I have to travel from time zone to time zone, I have to compulsively check it eight times to make sure that I'm doing it right. It's so not how, just you. I'm how the same often way. do you travel? You travel a lot. Like, it, well, it goes in cycles. and it, Lately, I've been traveling a lot. It's busy this spring and summer traveling. Is it all? And I, I, mostly business? in Florida, but... I get around somewhat, mostly in Florida. But it's flying around Florida, right? Right. Secret government work. Really? Really. Secret. Wow. (laughs) You're working on that. I like. 
What, what did you say earlier? You called me. You said it was a witness protection program. Exactly. Yes, witness relocation. Mm-hmm. Location. That's it. Just as long, you know, just as long as Steve Martin and Rick Moranis aren't with you, right? Hey, I love that no, movie. No, 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 no. What's no, your favorite all. movie from the eighties? Oh gosh, See, or, you're gonna go with the with the. Or just your favorite movie in general. It doesn't have to be from the eighties. Yeah, that tells a lot about a person. What's your favorite movie? Does it? Well, I think my favorite movie from the eighties is Harold and Maude, but I don't. Oh, know the that's the seventies though. That's seventies. Sweet, yeah, yeah, that's seventies. But I probably saw it in the eighties. Yeah. Because that's along the theme of, like you said, in politics, where we need the young blood in. Oh, fantastic movie. Kind of, you were talking about your marriage. You, you need the young blood. It can be chaos. Well, Ruth Gordon. That's why Harold. Uh, Ruth Gordon. Talk about a hot woman. My grandmother. Now she's dead, right? Oh. She'd be like 125 now if she were still right. alive, you know. My grandmother read all her books. She wrote books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandmother was a very old woman, died when she was like, 96, right? Um, I believe so. Um, and, uh, and she read the Ruth Gordon books and loved her. One of my favorite movies right now. My favorite movies are usually what I've just seen. No, wait a minute. I, Who is the guy, though? I want to... I wanna, Oh, Bud Court? Bud Court. Yeah, I didn't even have to Google it because you had the knowledge. That's right. Whose career sort of went slowly downhill after that movie. Like, appeared in a bunch of other cult films and then just couldn't, like, sustain it, you know? It's tough to be a cult film star, you know? Don't tell Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. (laughs) Who lives in Portland, Oregon. Does he? Really? That's Yeah, I believe he does, actually. I think you're making stuff up Come on, now. chat room. Bruce Campbell, Portland, time Oregon. In Bruce. I, know he's, I know he spends time in Portland. I don't know if he lives here. That's what I'm hearing. Let's check. Let's check the internet. So what else you were going to say? Your other favorite movie? Um, my favorite movie? Uh, right now, I think Mulholland Drive, just because I rewatched it recently. Wow. He lives in the a lot woods. of time. And I just watched Holy Smoke again. That's pretty, pretty that much one of my... Holy Smokes. I was thinking Up in Smoke by Cheech and Chong. No. Uh, <laughs> that's that's just... my third favorite because I love a good reefer film. You know what? I really like the Corsican Brothers as far as Cheech and Chong movies go. <laughs> that, that Up in Smoke is, is, you know, kind of when they became a, a trite version of themselves. Yeah. How about any Monty Python? Come on. No yeah, Monty you're right. Those are from the those are from my roots. That was an indicator of coolness back in the day. Yeah, I mean when you were in like high school, you had to like whip out the uh, the uh, Holy Grail. Spam a lot and Holy Grail. Um and and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, that, Rocky, that had to Rocky, be seen Rocky. Did you do Did you do a lot of Rocky Horror Picture co- Show when you were growing up? Did you go to the theater? I went. I was lucky in St. Louis. There's a really cool older film uh, house called the Tivoli Theater. It was one of the Fox theaters. So it was a really pretty, pretty cool place to go. And but I didn't do the dress up, dress up part of it. That was that was for the Drammy kids. Right. But I definitely went. And ours was the uh, Clinton Theater. Clinton the Street. Street. Clinton Street Theater, which is not too far from here in southeast portland many years i've got to go to portland i've never gone i went to um, seattle and port townsend um a wow. long time ago i was at a artist workshop in port townsend i might be biased but i like portland gorgeous better. i should have stayed up there you guys don't have such big bugs no we don't have what such big bugs Oh, no, no, no. We got little tiny bugs. Irritating little bugs. <laughs> that you can smash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With your finger, with a Kleenex. Yes. Unlike anything. the South. You don't even need a shoe. And Unlike- then I've been to San Francisco, but I've never been to Portland. Wow. Yeah, I would recommend Portland. Portland's the first place that I ever chose to live. Just something about it. You know, the first time I ever came here. I fell in love with the city. It stuck with me, and I just knew I needed to live here. Mm. And on that note, 
why did you why did you choose to live in Florida? I found my way down here when I was a long time ago. I was in my sort of hippie mother archetype. Not dirty hippie. Don't worry about that. Okay. I was, you weren't using patchouli are, to replace you're not bathing. not a dirty hippie? No, I'm not a dirty hippie, but I uh, I was more of a chosen, selected poor new mother and uh, was traveling around trying to find a way to live and not have to put my child in child care and see if I could write or exist somehow and found my way down to Florida and uh, worked at an alternative school there so I could have my child with me. And I, so I bordered on Dirty Hippie, but I didn't have the, the, the bad hygiene or, or uh, because you had the sensibility. You had the love of bathing in products. Yeah, I mean, that was there and I, I was working. So I found my way down there to sort of drop out of work for a while and worked in education for a while. And then, and then it is a weird position to be in and pick a city to live in. It's, it's pretty. Um, and I was married to my kid's father at the time, and we ended up picking Tallahassee because I could get a, a secret government job there. Secret job. Secret government. It's a capital. It's pretty. It's a nice place to raise children because it's small and nothing much happens. The biggest thing that happened was that Indigo Girls concert. Oh, and it, and like it is the it's the capital of Florida, right? Yes. Wow. So like, uh, it, you have Jeb or you had Jeb Bush in Tallahassee, we did. and then we, we had did. George W. in Austin, Texas, which is the Portland of Texas, by the way. That's right. It is Austin, cool. I like Austin. very cool. And Austin's one of the few places that has more bloggers. Per capita than Portland. Really? <laughs> yes. I think there are four or five of us in Tallahassee, and that's about it. Austin has a it lot is. of bloggers. Portland has a lot of bloggers, too. I'm Most always... people don't even know what a blog blogger is. In Tallahassee, yeah. they, they still have a pretty old-school conception that it's narcissistic navel-gazing and... Well, some of it is. And but... it's not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, it's not, not at all. Blogging, just... podcasting, Twitter, and this is not? No. Um, Dr. Normal People used who to... like to listen to themselves. Dr. Normal used to come home, and I would ask him how his day at work was, and he'd say, it was fine, dear. How was your day of drinking martinis and masturbating? And, and that would be how he referred to um, my blogging on some days. Well, I see. You've converted them pretty much, so... Well, he's the one that, that encouraged me to get a blog. It was just bitterness on his part. Ah. Yeah. Bitter that he had to be at work all day and that I got to be at home drinking martinis and masturbating while I blogged. No. I don't ever drink martinis until he gets home. <laughs> That's when cocktail hour begins. Yes. Yes. Cocktail hour. I don't understand why everyone doesn't have a blog or read blogs. If I, if I had a chance to read someone I knew and have intimate details of what they were thinking or doing or... I know, right? Thing, I, I just can't believe the people who don't, who know their friend has a blog and they don't read it. It, 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 it baffles me. I feel the same and way because given the chance to have that kind of knowledge about one of my friends, I'll yeah. take it every time. No kidding. People are crazy out they there. Are. They completely are. That being said, God, I hope some of the people that I know don't read my blog because I don't need them all in my brain. Yeah, there's a whole neighborhood here that doesn't know Cami Chaos is Cami Chaos. That's my delusion, too, and I have no idea. But it's my delusion that those people haven't found my blog. I, see, I'm not secretive about it at all, but it, there's not really much crossover between my I'm Cami Chaos and the neighborhood. I have a few friends in the neighborhood who know I have a blog. And they even know that I do the podcast. They've never listened to it. They've never read the blog. It's not their thing. But I could easily pinpoint a few weak spots where someday I'll be walking around my daughter's school and someone might go, are you Cami Chaos? And then for me, then for my daughter, it's all downhill from there. It's right. <laughs> like, ah! the, world, the worlds collide. Yeah. It, it'll happen at some point. And and uh, I'm okay with that. 
I just hope I think, she is. I think about it, it's kind of like, not that I'm doing this, but it's kind of like cheating on a spouse, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the spouse and the lover find themselves in the same room, mm-hmm. both looking at you. Uncomfortably, like yeah. Collided, mm-hmm. and, and you don't know who knows what about everything, and that, yeah, I don't look forward to that feeling. I hope it never happens, and I hope it never happens with my work, and it may well already have. Ugh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't hope work. that much. It stopped me. It doesn't shut me up, and I still say completely inappropriate things. Good. You should. I like inappropriate you know, things being said. What can you do? It's a, it's a compulsion. They're oversharing. Yeah, I don't think I could go back to not having a blog. I don't think I could either. I don't. I don't uh, not right now. I like it too much. I like the open space of it, and who knows where, what it means to, to do it. But I just, I don't want to, I don't want to give it up. I just love seeing what everyone does with their space too. That's yeah, it is. It's it's interesting to see what each individual person can come up with, and you know, to a certain extent, a lot of it's very uniform and it's the same thing, but. It's interesting to watch someone who's just started a blog when they start to realize, oh, I can do anything here. And suddenly right. they'll go from the really pre-formatted, what, you know, whatever their space is, template, to, you know, their own header and their own widgets and then adding in their content. And I also find it really interesting to go back and read, like, the first 10 posts that someone did when they first started blogging and then what they've done a year later because I find that, people rarely have their voice the first couple months. Oh, I, I totally didn't. I didn't. I thought I'd be writing movie reviews and just, you know, being a part of the community and, and different takes on things. I hadn't found my voice. I still probably have it, but it certainly wasn't the way, the direction that it seems to be going now. And it wasn't, it didn't flow. It took me a while to find out what flow. Yeah. Where, where my my interests were. I think my direction has changed several times. But you you have the same thread which I adore and was really initially attracted to the mummified me, just the sense of women's lives as we both define ourselves and mm-hmm. then try to try to define ourselves as mothers and against a a, a culture that it has a version of mother in its head. I love that approach, and I love it that your work ties back to that. I still love that you get that. I think it's I think it's something that a lot of us confront in different ways, and you know whether you're a cultural person, there has to be places where you question and and wonder how much of that was your choice and how much of it was just trying to meet some expectations. Mm-hmm. But definitely, people who have any kind of alternative life how to reconcile that with what the culture defines as god forbid good mom and who are, and keep yourself it's, it's it's how we live i love i love that how you explain that thank you so you much i'm blushing now oh i'm all glowy and blushy oh glowy like your lava lamp yay hello Oh, really pretty, pretty set, by the way. Thank you. This is our our stone wall, and this is our lava <laughs> lamp, and this is my I, my chair. <laughs> Your IKEA. So, did you have to build the IKEA stuff? Well, he doesn't even have an IKEA. Oh, uh, we just got our our IKEA not too long ago. The IKEA chair, all we had to do was screw the legs onto it, and I don't think we had to do much to the couch either. Did we just have to put the legs on the couch, babe? Yeah, all we had to do was put the legs on the couch. So minimal, minimal set building. The real stuff is all on the other side behind the camera where um, the Dr. Normal has all of his keyboards and his recording equipment. And, and the computers. Buttons, he knows just how oh, to talk. Those buttons that he can push and the little, what are you, you know, not switches, but bars that he has to adjust. and Magic. He's got power. He's a magic man. He's got power over there. Power that I am of no idea how to wield. <laughs> you, this is when you say, "Oh, thank you." I'm Sorry, glad I'm that working on He's falling up asleep. Some music. He's falling asleep. Yeah, I think we're actually. I think we're getting into 
after hours, after hours, and we should probably start wrapping up the That's show. That's right. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Deb? No, it was such a good, good time to spend with you. I loved it. You, you create great space. Oh, thank Couch you. Couch and all. Yay. Next time I do want to do, do want to be in town with you, but it worked out pretty well from this mafioso booth. Well, all the way in Florida. I feel no need to retract the invitation. If you're ever in Portland, you're oh. coming over here. We're feeding you, and you're going to come sit on our couch and do the show. A second date. Yes, our, our second Yay. date. I still expect good panties, though. Definitely. <laughs> I, I always put out on the second date. It's not Woo-hoo! the first. Might as well cut to the chase, see if it's worth the time. Mm-hmm. But you would definitely be worth the time. And again, I really enjoyed being with you tonight. And we enjoyed having you. Thank you so much for doing the show, Deb. Thanks Thank for staying you. up late. Mm-hmm. Really. Thank you very much. Yeah. Say good night to all good the Mafiosa dudes. <laughs> I will. I'll kiss them for you on the way out. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. <laughs>